Okay, so in our second Shovel Knight review of the day, Showdown, it's over on the channel live right now. Go check that one out too, after this one, of course. Here though, we're looking at Shovel Knight King of Cards. This one, it's a true sequel in the series, not a spin-off like Showdown. Does this one though continue the series pedigree and deliver a fantastic platforming adventure? Well, sit back, relax, hit subscribe, you know you want to. Like the video, it really does help. Leave us a comment below letting us know if you're a fan of the series. And with that, my shameless plug is over. Let's get this started. So to kick this off, first of all, thank you to the publishers for supplying the review code today. They did request to avoid spoilers, so for that reason in this one, video we're sticking to the first couple of bosses and hour or so of gameplay. Story on this one, it's the final expansion in the Treasure Trove Saga. Here we take on the role of King Knight traveling through 30 new levels to take down the three kings who rule over the land. Here though, the timeline, it's been thrown back a bit to actually before the original game. It's, it's a prequel of sorts. Here, the king's only subjects, or his only royal subjects at least, are his rats. It's a fun story, the writing it's as good as always, and the sense of humour seems to come as easily as ever to some of our favourite returning characters. It's just great stuff overall, I really enjoyed this tale. If you're a fan of the series, I have no doubt you will too. So gameplay on first off, this is it's just some fantastic platforming and it's just so, so creative. Every level I reached the game, it would challenge me just a little bit more. That ramp is perfect. I was always excited to see what was coming next for me. The moveset here initially, it might seem pretty basic. The main movement's actually a shoulder dash attack. This will of course damage enemies, but it also launches the king into a spin attack. Now you can only do this following that shoulder dash. There's no input for just the spin attack on its own. It's a really interesting idea and it's so satisfying to pull off. Now, let me give you an example so you know exactly what I mean. Because it is, it's kind of weird to explain. You'll dash into an enemy, launch off them into a spin, and then while in this move, continue to spin on top of them to destroy them. And it sounds awkward, I know, but it just felt so intuitive a few seconds into the game. You really get a rhythm like one of the mu old music Guitar Hero games. This then though leaks into the platforming too. Can't reach a ledge, dash off the edge and spin up. Come across a huge gap, which is impossible to jump across. Well, dash into the wall next to you, spin on a nearby object, then chain this together over multiple environmental pieces to make your way across to the other side. The levels here, they're just so unique. Part platform, almost part puzzle now. Now when it comes to attack, expect to be dodging certain enemies as well. You can push them off ledges and occasionally you'll even be able to use the level to your advantage with objects for you to interact with. Throughout the game as well, this is the typical collector fun you would expect. Pick up gold, jewels, medals and use these then to upgrade your moveset, weapons, items and outfits. When it comes to progression, everything here works on a map system as per the previous entries in the series. It's pretty similar to Mario, Mario Overworld where you defeat one stage and then the next ones will unlock. Here though, you of course get the story progression, but you can also expect some side quests, bosses moving around the map that you can interact with, well, fight, and of course, card battles to take part in, hence King of Cards. Now with the card battles known here as Jousters, it's a simple card game in idea, but it can be pretty tough as the game progresses. The idea here is you'll find a jewel on the card grid system and you need to place cards to land on that jewel. The trick here is the arrows though that you can see on the edge of all these cards that we're showing you on screen right now. These distinguish where they can push other cards around the board. Once the board is full, that's game over and those with the most gems wins. So it's not really a card game, it's more of a strategy game, if anything. I will be honest, I didn't think it was amazing. I got a bit bored with it at times, but these, they're quick enough that I didn't mind doing them and most of the time it was optional at least. I, like a lot of people, I'm sure that I'm here for the platforming. Now finally, when it comes to gameplay, I need to talk about the levels. These, they're short levels that often, as I said, felt like puzzles down to that dash mechanic. Every single one though, I, I couldn't just you know, run my way through it as quickly as possible. I had to think about how I could use my skill set just a little bit more to progress. It's incredibly rewarding here to beat a level with some brain power. 
Also, when it comes to the levels, checkpoints are frequent enough that you're not going to be repeating yourself too much. And once you master this game, you'll come back to levels that initially challenged you and just fly through them in a matter of seconds. These checkpoints are great because I will say the combat could get a little frustrating at times when it didn't quite work out or maybe you couldn't make it across a pit, but overall, great work. So graphics and this, it's Shovel Knight. In name, it's an expansion, so don't expect too much difference or growth from the original. Actually, don't expect any. We even see a few worlds and enemies repeat from past titles. That though, it's not a bad thing to me. It's actually fan service. It drives home the idea that this is a continuation of a world we've now infested so many years in. Remember the original one of this? It came out way back in 2014, five years ago. It's crazy to think about. Here, as usual, we get the beautiful pixel artwork. Shovel Knight was doing this before 99% of titles were going for that 2D look, before it was, you know, cool. Characters are true to the genre, yet they have a cartoonish detail that makes them stand out as unique to the world. And additionally, the animations here, they're really stylistic. I love every movement of the king himself. These little animations, I've got to say, they, they, they take it above the pixel art style and bring it into the more modern age. Now, when it comes to the levels, though, they kind of follow this format too, but it's almost like if the characters were a bit more modern in design, they live in like a SNES era world. Shovel Knight's always done a really good job of bringing these two different styles together, and it really works to provide a unique visual style. Outside of the platforming, then, the last thing is the overworld map. Love this too, matches that retro feel, but never at the cost of making it difficult to navigate. You'll always know where you're going next. You'll always know what you need to do. Graphics, as usual, completely stand out. So last up, audio, and it's the usual quality we've come to expect here. Characters, they have no dialogue. We expect that scrolling sounds as you know, the text appears. Attacks each feel unique with the kind of slapstick over the top sounds of the series and the music. I've always been a Shovel Knight soundtrack fan and again this one just doesn't disappoint. It reinforces the world, it's fun, it's really fast paced. I could happily pause this one and just let it loop in the background of my life. So the final verdict and this one, can you tell I liked it first of all? Returning to a game world I love with a whole new mechanic is more than enough for me to have a good time. Instantly recognisable with a twist. I'm okay with that. I didn't expect it to, you know, leap too far. At the end of the day, it is, after all, an expansion. I will say this, if you like solid platforming, creative implementation of attacks, and the cast of characters that have basically owned the 2D platforming world for the last five years, then you've come to the right place even if you've never played a Shovel Knight title before, you can jump in here. I've never given a 10 out of 10 on my channel. I was tempted with this one, but I've got to say there was a few things that kind of let me down. The car game, yes, it was mostly optional, but it just wasn't for me. And the combat, the platforming could get a little bit frustrating at times. It slowed down the tempo of the gameplay, but that's me being really, really picky. Shovel Knight, King of Cards, it's a truly unique platformer. I'm excited to see what they do next with this closing out the treasure trove line of games. Will it be more Shovel Knight or something entirely new? And I'm hoping for new. I want to see what else these guys can do. It's provided me with a huge amount of fun over the last five years. I'm happy to say they didn't disappoint in this closeout. For me, today, we're giving this one a 9 out of 10. It's an amazing experience. It's a worthy addition to your Switch catalogue, that's for sure. Just go and pick this one up. Thanks for watching. Are you a fan of the series and will you be picking this one up? What's your favourite platform at now 2D, not 3D? For me, it's Shantae. Absolutely love that game. Another one you should definitely pick up on the Switch. But yeah, Shovel Knight Showdown is live over on the channel right now, so maybe go check that out too. And with that, hit subscribe, hit like, and we will see you all on the next Gaming X. Yeah.